It's Country's Family Reunion, featuring the legends that made it the golden age of country music. So sit back and enjoy. There'll be laughter, singing, storytelling, and a few tears thrown in here and there. Tonight's guests include Jim Ed Brown, George Hamilton IV, Martha Carson, Gene Shepard, and hosted by Bill Anderson. Imagine if I had to go around this room to everybody in here, I bet you nearly every hand would go up if I said was the first place you ever sang a song in church. I imagine nearly every one of us in this room, that was the first place, first place we ever we ever sang a song. So the first songs I sang was in church when I was four, five, six years old. Mama put me up on a went to a little Methodist church. And I, I went to the Methodist church one year, the next year I'd go to the Baptist church, which everyone had the best baseball team. I would... <laughs> and that's, that's just telling it like, that's telling it like it is. <laughs> I think you better sing, Charlie. <laughs> Wanda Jackson, it is so good to see you. Didn't you once quit country music and go into strictly gospel music yes, for a while? Yes, uh, shortly after I was saved, yeah. Because simply, I didn't ever divorce country music, you know. But uh, it was kind of like the <laughs> same thing happened to me that happened to Charlie Walker. I was recording for Capitol. Well, I got saved, and I was all excited about the Lord and wanted to get the message out the only way I knew how, to sing. And so Capitol said, okay, do one. So I did one, and... A couple of years went by, and I said, I'm ready to do another gospel album. They said, another one? Nobody needs any more than one. <laughs> so they said, maybe I should pursue uh, a gospel recording contract. And I guess I'm one of the few who uh, ask for a release from Capitol Records. You know, that's not done too often. But it, singing for the Lord was more important for me, and uh, I haven't regretted a bit of it. Right. Sing one for us, Wanda. Yeah. This is so nice to uh, sit around and hear everyone in country music talking so freely and openly about the Lord. Because I think all of us remember days when even if you loved the Lord, you didn't talk about it so much, you know. And I think it's great. God bless every one of you who are a, a testimony for the Lord. I'm like Charlie. I can't sing sitting down. <laughs> I'm too short. <laughs> when I sit down, there's nothing left of me. Yeah, let's try that. This world is not my home. I'm just 
chance to pass them through and my treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue the angels beckon me from heaven's open door and i can't feel at home in this world anymore It's not my home Then Lord what will I do The angels beckon me From heaven's open door And I can't feel at home In this world anymore Well they're all expecting me And this one thing I know Is I fixed that up with Jesus 27 years ago And I know he'll welcome me for I am weak and poor And I can't feel at home in this world anymore Help me out, y'all, I need it Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you If heaven is not my home Then, Lord, what will I do? Among us here today, we actually have one of our Opry members, country music stars, who's an ordained minister, Stu Phillips. That's right. Stu Episcopal Phillips. Church, is that right? That's Stu. right. Well, Bill, I, uh, I, I'm a member of the Episcopal Church, and uh, the, the uh, leader of the Episcopal Church is called a priest, and I wear vestments, like the Catholic Church, very colorful vestments. And one day, I was standing there, just ready to do the service, and I and a tiny little guy came up from the uh, kindergarten in church school and he tugs at my robes. And he says, hello, God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to spoil a child's illusion, so I never told him any difference. But he's, he's old enough now to know the difference. Uh, Sigga said so. <laughs> Many years ago, in days of childhood, I used to play till evening shadows come. Then winding down an old familiar pathway, well, I heard my mama call that set of sun sing on. Come home, come home, it's supper time. The shadows lengthen fast. Come home, come home, it's supper time. One day, beside her bedside, I was kneeling And angel wings were winnowing the air Ah, oh, she heard the call of supper time in heaven And now I know she's waiting for me there Shadows lengthen fast. Come home, come home, it's supper time. We're going home at last. A little turn around.
In vision now, I see her standing yonder And her familiar voice I hear once more She heard the call of supper time in heaven And now I know she's waiting for me there Come home, come home, it's supper time. The shadows lengthen fast. Come home, come home, it's supper time. Stu, you were, you were talking about the little boy asking if you were God. A preacher up at a little church in Maine told me a story this summer. He said that in his church, they have a brass plaque that hangs, and engraved on this plaque are the names of all the members of the church who have died serving our country in the military, in the military service somewhere around the world, back to the First World War, the Second World War, so forth. He said he was standing there by that plaque one morning and this little boy was standing there looking up at all of these names and the little boy said to the preacher he said what what are all of those names and the preacher said those are the members of our church who have died in the service little boy said which one 8 30 or 11 o'clock <laughs> tell y'all I grew up near Atlanta Georgia and about 12 15 every day on WSB radio I would turn my radio on to hear James and Martha Carson used to sign on singing keep on the sunny side oh and some of the greatest gospel Martha Carson is is a true legend in gospel music I am so glad you are here with us Put that microphone on the stand there and give us some Martha Carson music. We need, we need to hear some of these. We're going to have to raise this thing up. I never could do nothing sitting down. Here we go, everybody. I'm satisfied. I've got that old time religion. 
My granddaddy was um, a real hillbilly. He was a mountain man from uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina, a place called Beaver Creek near Ashe County. And um, he taught me to love country music. Um, when I was a kid, I used to sit on his knee and he'd listen to the radio from Nashville. WSM, the Grand Ole Opry. Only he talked funny being a mountain man. He, he didn't call it WSM. He said, we're going to tune in double yes ma'am on the radio here. <laughs> and, uh, and he didn't call it the Grand Ole Opry. He said, we're going to listen a little bit of the Grand Ole Uproar on our talking radio machine. And uh, he had moved out of the mountains to Winston-Salem, North Carolina to work for the railroad. That's how I became a city billy instead of a hillbilly because granddaddy <laughs> had moved to Winston-Salem. And he worked for the southbound. And uh, one night we were listening to the Grand Ole Opry, Roy Acuff and the Smoky Mountain Boys and Minnie Pearl and all that. And I was sitting on his knee playing with his railroad watch. And uh, just a little fella. And he said, you know something, son, I'm a mountain man and I'm a railroad man. I know about them things. Let me tell you something. And I said, yes, sir. He said, you know, life's just like a mountain railroad. And I said, what do you mean, granddad? And he said, well, you know, sometimes you're up on a mountaintop where the sun's shining and sky's blue and everything's going great. And then sometimes you go way down in a deep, dark holler where it's scary and lonesome, dark. He said, life's just like that, just like a mountain railroad. Sometimes the road of life gets to twisting and turning. And if you don't watch it, sometimes you get sidetracked. Granddaddy said, stay off the sidetrack, son. Stay on the main line. I didn't know what he was talking about. And uh, I was just a little feller. And then he said to me, he said, you know, son, when you get a little older, you'll understand what I'm talking about. He said, when you get older, the road's going to get bumpy for you, just like it does for everybody. It's bound to happen. It's just part of life. He said, sometime the ride gets a little bumpy out there. But he said, that's not what's important. The important thing is not how rough the ride is. It's the final destination. It's a funny thing, I thought he was talking about railroads. <laughs> Granddaddy's favorite song was um, a song uh, called Life's Railway to Heaven. I remember when I was a little kid, some railroad men sang it at his funeral. And uh, I sang it at my daddy's funeral. I hope someday uh, George Hamilton V sings it at mine. <laughs> yep. All right. <laughs> Life is like a mountain railroad With an engineer that's brave We must make the run successful From the grave to the grave Watch the curves that fills the tunnels Do your duty and never fail Keep your hand Upon the throttle And your eye Upon the rail Blessed Savior Thou must guide us Till we reach That blissful shore Where the angels Wave to joy in thy praise forevermore I'll pick it, Jim As you roll the trestle spanning joy and swelling tide you behold the union depot into which your train will glide there you'll meet the superintendent God the Father 
and God the Son with a hearty joyous plaudit weary pilgrim welcome home blessed Savior thou the sky till we reach that blissful shore where the angels wait to join us in thy praise forevermore. Where the angels wait to join us in thy praise forevermore. Thank y'all. I want to tell you something. I love to hear him talk and tell those things like that. I but I'm going to tell you something. If you go over to Europe, and especially in England, you've got to get him on the show with you. Because I, I traveled over there with him one time, and he's the most interesting man. And I tease him about this, but he really is. Takes you around to all those places and tells you about all of them. And it makes it so much. That ain't funny, but it's interesting. Tinky says I missed my call and I should have been a sightseeing guy. <laughs> That's because Tinky don't want you at home that much. Uh, you was telling me when we was in Phoenix the last time for the show over there about this uh, guy that was uh, giving this uh, preach, not preaching, but uh, teaching, you know, and, uh, and the guy, uh, the girl or somebody stood up and asked a question. You remember telling me about that? There was a great um, theologian named Dr. Carl Bart, and he was German, I believe, and he went over to Chicago University to do a lecture on the history of the Bible. And when he got through, he said he'd take questions, and some young student stood up and said, I have a question for you. And I said, um, after all these years, you're a great theologian. You know more about the Bible than any of us, I guess, and more than we'll ever learn. What is the greatest truth that you've ever learned from a lifetime of studying the Bible and being a great theologian. And without blinking an eye, this great theologian, Karl Barth, said, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Simple as that, really. Isn't it? Absolutely. Jenny Pruitt, hmm? we need a song out of you. Well, I was just sitting here listening and enjoying what everybody else had to say, and it, and it brings <laughs> back a lot of memories to me to know that people all over the world usually try to think of something to do for little people you know, the children of the world. And I think my favorite little kid's song is still my all-time favorite gospel song as well. And an old friend of mine that I've loved dearly for many, many years, 37 years, Jeanette Rudy and I have been personal close friends. And this is her all-time favorite thing. And I know that she'll buy at least three or 400 of these tapes to give for Christmas gifts if I'll sing this for her, and I'm going to do it. It's called Jesus Loves Me, and we're going to do I'll do the verses, and everybody join in on the course, and we'll do... Co uh, Verse, chorus, uh, verse, chorus, tag, and out. And Jimmy's got the intro. <laughs> Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Yep. 
thinking a while ago when uh, Stu was talking about the little child that came up to him and asked him if he was God. And then while Jeannie was singing, I was thinking about Corinna, my grand, little granddaughter. And, uh, and then I got to thinking about a story I read. And it was this little boy about four years old, and his mom and daddy had told him that he was getting ready to get a new brother or sister that would be the Lord would be sending down from heaven. This is a true story. And so eventually the, the baby was born, and they brought the baby home, and he went over to the, the little baby, little baby sister, and he said, tell me what God looks like. I'm beginning to forget. What a great story. True. Goodness. Out of the mouths of babies. Bill, we, yes. uh, we were created to have fellowship with him. Yes, That's the reason right. that we were created in his likeness. If we stop and think about in his likeness, that's hard to imagine how, how we in this old worthless shell, but we still look like him. And uh, he wants to talk to us yes. every day because uh, he loves us. And we need to talk to him just like I'm talking to you. Exactly. Now, he's not someone plumb out of reach that you have to go through someone to get to. We have a direct line to him. By just mentioning his name. And, and at the mention of his name, the enemy, who is the only one that comes between us and him, the enemy has to flee. And is, see, he is love. God is love. Jesus is the perfect epitome of a perfect love, the only perfect man that was ever made. And we are made in his likeness. And he loved us so much, you know, that he gave his life for us. And can you imagine now, if you think of all the bad things in the world, the evil comes from the enemy, mm -hmm. Satan. Yes. Okay, there's coming a time when he won't be with us. Can you imagine what it's like when there's nothing but perfect love left in the world and the enemy is gone? There won't be any prejudice, any greed, any lust. There won't be anything but perfect love. What are some people and in this room that missed their calling, Stu? I think a lot of people in this room should have been preachers. That's and beautiful, uh, Buck. My and Bill, some people in here are preachers. <laughs> and they just didn't go to school. And Bill, I, I want to say something on a little louder note. You know, I think God has a sense of humor because you can look around this room and see that he I did. did. <laughs> <laughs> Russell took that personally. <laughs> My grandson, they all go to Sunday school. They know God. But my grandson had this little cat, and he loved this cat. And he went outside to play one day, and the little cat followed him out and got hit by a car. And I thought, Lord, have mercy. How am I going to tell him that that cat is dead? He come back a couple hours later and won't know where his cat was. And I said, baby, I hate to tell you this, but your kitty cat followed you outside while going and got hit by a car and it got killed. I said, it's up in heaven with God. He looked at me real strange. He said, Granny, what would God want with a dead cat? <laughs> hey, Bill. Bill. That reminds me of uh, Justin Tubbs' uh, little son, one of the youngest one, when he was a little feller. Uh, his wife told me about this, that their dog got killed, a little puppy, and, and she, when he came home from school, and uh, she didn't know how to tell him, but she could tell the older one and, and you know, explain to him. She did, but she took the little one in the car and thought, well, I'll drive around the block several times and we'll talk. You know, just ease it in on him. And said, son said, you know your little dog, your little puppy? He, he went to dog heaven today. He said, well, all right. <laughs> Johnny, I think the song that uh, you put down to do would be very appropriate right now, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. 
Well, let me get these words because I don't want to sing it wrong. And you didn't write it, so I don't know it. <laughs> little joke there. <laughs> Jokes that little shouldn't be out by themselves, <laughs> should they? time I couldn't read revelations in the Bible because I just could not imagine anybody 
that could take Jesus and put him on a cross. And I didn't really understand what that was all about. But the whites do a song, and I don't know if they can do it now. I, I'm just going to ask off the top of my head. There's a song called He Took Your Place that I think has helped me understand that more than anything. And I don't know if y'all can do it now. It's my, one of my favorite songs in the world. Can you guys do this song that Johnny's talking about? All right. Up on a cruel tree at Calvary Twas there my precious Savior Christ Forgive them for they know not what they do Oh sinner friend for you he died my Savior's head A blood was flowing down his face In shame forsaken there he hung and died Oh sinner friend he took your place His hand Main song, Bill. That is beautiful. Thank y'all for doing that. Peter, you got a song for us today? Well, I was just thinking of when I got so sick, uh, I felt a little shamed. Like I always thought that Christians are just not even supposed to be sick. You know, I mean, I just kept thinking that how could this be happening? Because uh, I never smoked, I never drank, I didn't do all this. And I remember one night at the Opry, uh, somebody told me, somebody that I looked to as a as a Christian, told me. Quit talking about the illness and don't tell anybody anymore. And about that time, Ricky Skaggs walked out of the dressing room there, Mr. Roy's room, I still call it. Ricky walked out. 
He said, how's my little sister tonight? And I said, oh, I'm, I'm great. I'm just fine. And he pulled me right into his chest. And he said, you need prayer? And I said, well, I'm not going to ask anybody anymore. And he said, the devil would just love it if you didn't ask us to pray for you. And I know, John, I think about you so many times, and I pray for you so many times. And we pray for one another. And I thought earlier, a while ago, when we were talking about praying and that, and that daily relationship with God and with Jesus, that daily relationship we have is, uh, is like what really is love. Any love relationship, you know, you nurture it, and, and it nurtures you. And that's what love is all about. And love with the Lord is, is that, that way. And uh, I just don't know what anybody does without him or can do without him and even when they ain't sick but uh, the old preacher says y'all and, and I will repeat this today y'all pray for me I need to pray and y'all need to practice <laughs> that's what he said <laughs> so remember that till this thing is gone <laughs> sing this great old Albert Brumley song that we well, were talking about earlier I hope I can get through it because all the, I was telling Larry Black that these songs today have taken me right back to the day of my salvation in that little Baptist church and we used to sing this at every homecoming, and always at the next homecoming, there'd be somebody missing, so we never know. I hear you, boys. Soon we'll come to the end of life's journey, and perhaps we'll never meet anymore till we get Over there on that beautiful shore If we never meet again This side of heaven 